Team, welcome back to the Systemize Your SMA Masterclass. This is episode four already of the Masterclass. And so far, we've gone through a lot of material. And if you missed the previous Masterclasses on the systemization modules, make sure you go back and watch those because they're going to be pivotal to what we're covering today, which is all about structuring, creating these SOP structures, and then being able to store them inside of an internal wiki. So if you seem a little lost at this point, you probably have to go back and watch those episodes. But let's jump straight in today and talk about structuring our Wikipedia, our internal wiki. And if you guys aren't uh, sure where to store this quite yet, we use ClickUp and all the examples I'm going to give today are gonna specifically come from ClickUp. So uh, it's a great software. Uh, I do have an affiliate code. I'll drop it down into the link below uh, in, in the description. Uh, that way, if you guys aren't signed up, you can sign up through me if you find this helpful. Uh, if not, no worries. If you already have ClickUp, awesome. You can take these templates and actually rip them directly from us. So I want to jump straight into it today and talk about some of the rules of building your company wiki and storing your SOPs. And then we'll go into a little bit more of the tactical side and show you how it's all set up here in a second. But make sure your current project software uh, is what you use to store your SOPs. I know some people like to separate the two. I like to have my SOPs stored in the same place where my team is doing their day-to-day -day work. And you want these to live as close as possible to each other. Uh, and especially where most of your work is done on the day-to-day, -day. that way your team can quickly switch over to the SOP if they need access to it. And sometimes, and I'll show you guys this in a later module inside of the master class, is that we can integrate some of these SOPs directly into our workflow and our team can utilize those. But for now, we're just talking about creating a storage solution and creating a Wikipedia where your team can search for different SOPs, different trainings, playbooks, whatever it is that you guys are looking for. Okay. The second thing here is systemized businesses are worth more. So this is worth doing guys, especially if your goal is to exit down the road, then systemizing this is going to be 100% crucial to that acquisition. One day you're going to get a better multiple if you have a really robust storage solution for all of your SOPs. It's one of the things that they're going to look at if you want to exit your agency one day. Uh, and then just remember, if you guys do exit your agency, which is a goal for a lot of people starting in the SMA space, these wikis travel. And so if you ever leave your current business, chances are you can take this wiki with you and you have a really nice foundation for maybe you start a second agency in a different vertical, or maybe you're starting another service-based business, or you're getting into e-commerce or whatever your next venture might be, this will be a really good framework and foundation for whatever business you go into. So take time, build this. It's really important. So sliding on over things that you'll need uh, for your PM and systems wiki are going to be the ability to attach media. So currently, if your project management software or your system solution does not have the ability to attach photos, PDFs, looms, you need the ability to do that, especially embedded loom videos. It's going to be crucial for your ability to actually storing some of these SOPs. From there, you also need permission levels because as your team grows, not everyone needs to be in the know on all of the systems inside your business. So they'll just have visibility on the things that are most important to their position. You'll need some task and subtask creation as well. You'll need task description because you'll need a place to write out the written SOP, which we talked about in the last episode, but that'll be really important. And then lastly, template duplication abilities because chances are you'll need to duplicate these, especially if you're doing like an onboarding process, chances are you'll duplicate those tasks over and over again and be able to uh, systemize that piece and then just be able to duplicate it. That way you don't have to reset it up every single time. So it's a little bit more systemized and automated. Now moving into structuring your wiki and you guys, this is extremely easy to do. And I'm going to show you the inside of my wiki here in just a second, but uh, structuring your wiki and, and this template is something that we created for you guys. And I'll give it to you uh, at the very end of the video. Um, but it really comes down to the template. Okay. And you can call this your, whatever your company's name is, and then just wiki. And we do this at the space level. So the template that you guys are going to be getting, it's going to be at the space level. From there, you'll have five different lists inside of that space. You can add more if you have different different lanes of your agency that you want to be, uh, be going into a little bit more. Don't feel like you have to rush to set these up. I'll give you the template and you guys can download this directly. You'll have a table view activated here, and this will be the main home screen. Normally, you guys will have a list view activated as the as the default view. Uh, the list is a little bit more concise uh, and is a little bit better just for system storage. Just because the table view is a little bit more concise, you can fit more SOPs inside of it. And it's a little bit more digestible versus a list view that's a little bit more expansive or maybe a um, Kanban view, something like that. Uh, the table view is really going to be the best for storage uh, as far as getting the most amount of SOPs in one spot. From there, the different columns that we're going to be utilizing are going to be name, which is just going to be the task 
From there, we'll have a status behind it. The date that it was updated, created by, and tags. And we'll go through each of these. But essentially, the name is just going to be the name of the playbook or the name of the SOP. Um, and for the actual task name, either, uh, once again, playbook is perfectly fine, to use, or the SOP name. Uh, if it's an SOP, a lot of times we use like how-to terminology. So, you know, how to set up a onboarding for X, Y, and Z client, right? That might be a good naming convention for you guys to use. We use a lot of how-tos uh, inside of our SOP builds, okay? And it's easily searchable as well. From there, we'll have a status uh, attached to it on our statuses, and you'll see this inside of the template. There's a couple different ones, but essentially it's just, hey, this is a SOP that we have to stand up. This is one that needs attention or maybe didn't pass the test of, of whoever is reviewing that SOP and it needs revisions, and then from there, ready to use as well, okay? And then we have date updated. On the date updated side, this is just for you to know when the last time that this SOP was updated. So anytime you go in and make a change, it will give you the updated uh, day and time for that. So uh, if something is over a year old or two years old at this point, chances are it needs to be updated again. So you know when to go and make those changes. And then from there, uh, we have the tags as well. Now the tags are simply just different tags that we're going to attach to the SOP. So we know, hey, this is a creative department. It is for the brand side and it's a playbook. Okay. That way we can filter down by maybe say we want to filter by all of our playbooks. So you have your media buying playbook, maybe you have your, your company brand book. There's uh, different playbooks for email or retention marketing. Okay. You can filter by your, by your playbooks and your team can easily find those. Now, maybe you have different SOPs inside of creative, like, Hey, for a creative onboarding, here's the step-by-step -step process on how to do that. Okay. Well, you can filter down simply by creative, see all of your creative handbooks, SOPs, all in one spot. So this tag will become really important for you to filter down by exactly what you're looking for. Okay, once those columns are set up, and once again, you guys will have a template for this, but uh, this is kind of what it will look like inside. And we did the SOP creation in our last episode to store it. Um, so how to onboard a new Phoenix client. And what we do is we take everything that was written inside of that document and we just put it inside of the description of that specific SOP. So that hide your brand book, we might bring that down here. And this is obviously an onboarding SOP, but that would come down inside of here. And I'll show you what this looks like here in just a second inside, but that kind of gives you the base level. Now, permission levels will be important as well. If you guys are looking to change your permission levels, you can change them by the list or you can change them for the whole space. Uh, if you want full transparency across all your SOPs because you want your team informed on all of them, great. Then just leave the permissions wide open. But if you run a little bit larger business and you only want to show visibility on specific lanes of your agency for specific people, then you can go ahead and go to the share per, uh, sharing and permissions and then just select the people that you want to see in the different departments. So if you only want your sales team involved in the sales SOPs and the sales lane, awesome. You can come in here and just make sure that they have access to those and you can block everyone else out from that. And you just change these little icons full to uh, no access. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I, relatively easy to set up. And I'm going to jump inside of our own Wikipedia here. That way it's not just the Miro board you're looking at, but you can grab that, that ClickUp Wiki template uh, inside of the Miro board. I'm going to link that in the description for you guys. Um, and you guys can download it, add your own SOPs. And there's a couple, uh, a couple ones inside of there to kind of show you different ways to set up SOPs. Sometimes some of our trainings don't even have written portions. Uh, there's like just PDFs that they have to go through. So let's jump to the wiki that I've stood up or the template. And I'll show you a little bit more inside of that. All right. So this is inside of our company wiki. And as you can see here at the top of the company wiki, uh, we have uh, uh, the actual space level. And what we can do is we can make this table view the default. And I'll do that right now by coming over here to more settings and just turn this as the default uh, to everyone, which is this button here. Okay. So it should set already. So that's good. Um, and then from here, you can see there's three SOPs or playbooks already put inside of this. So you guys can kind of get an idea of how we set up our SOPs. Now, this is from the high level, right? So this is the space level, and this is going to show you across every single department what SOPs that you have in each department. So it is not going to uh, segment them by marketing, sales, fulfillment. It's all going to be here ready to use. Now, what's nice about this is this is a good admin view. So if you have a COO or operations manager that wants to come in and make some changes, uh, this is a great view to see like all of your SOPs all in one spot. Now, chances are your entire team might not need the access to all of this, but really good for the leadership and management team to see. Now, if we come down to the list views, you can see uh, inside of marketing, I put a brand book in here and you guys can see our brand book as kind of a little bonus 
But if I open up our brand book, I have it just linked inside of here. And then I can open this up and just see everything inside of our brand book, which is kind of nice. Okay. And so if I want to see logos and creative assets, great. That's all stored here and people can get access to all of our logos and all of our brand assets. Okay. Which is kind of nice. From there, we got things like color palettes. We have fonts. We got the tone and language of our company, some inspiration as well, which I think this is relatively blank. I don't think there's a whole lot inside of there quite yet. I think we're still building that. And then some other assets like the agency ther therapy mural board, thumbnail best practices. Essentially, that's that's our entire brand book. Okay? And I'm sure we'll add on as we continue to go on. But that's just an example. We just linked a document to our brand book inside of here. That way it's easily found if our team is looking for it for whatever reason. From there, we can go into the sales lane as well. I think there is an SOP in here, which is just onboarding a new Phoenix client. Now, this is a more traditional SOP and the one that was shown on the Miro board, but this is might what it looked like where you can embed a Loom video inside of here. You can even play with like putting columns in here if you don't like the look of having, you know, the Loom video on top in the SOP below it. You could do side by side if you wanted to. You just have to use the column feature uh, to be able to do that. But this is how we set up the SOP inside really easy, easily uh, consumed. You can watch the video right in here. You can look at the step-by-step -step procedure in there as well. So it makes it really easy. And then from there, adding the new client to Slack. Uh, this is kind of step two inside of our onboarding process. And it once again goes step-by-step. -step. Uh, and then at the very end, we just have a little approval. Okay, it was created by me, reviewed by nobody. Okay, uh, approval date. 2724. And then this is version one of this SOP. Now, if we want to go back and change that really easily changed, but we can also see here that this is a ready to use SOP, which means like, Hey, it's good to go. This is exactly how we do this process. And then from there, the date updated, which it was updated today. I'm sure I made some changes for this video inside of there. And then this is the automated uh, created by. So whoever creates the task is who it was created by. And then uh, I have an onboarding tag because this is onboarding. Okay. And maybe I'll add in Phoenix because this is Phoenix uh, for our Phoenix program. And I can just add that tag right inside of there. And you could take the colors off of this as well. You don't have to keep the colors on if you don't want to. Uh, completely optional if you want to put some color on it. I just personally don't because I think it's a little bit, a little bit much. Um, so onboarding Phoenix, if you want to see all the tags, you can always expand these columns too as needed. And we'll do one more here on the fulfillment side. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then this would be like an internal, you know, wiki for our fulfillment team. So for us, like we do a lot of consulting. So this is how agencies should think about market leader positioning. So if I click inside of here, you'll actually see uh, that the training is attached below. It opens up a PDF and there's a PDF specifically on how to think about positioning your agency. Uh, and it kind of takes takes them through a, a written training. That's just an example. There's a lot of different ways that you guys can structure these. Um, we just use this as a knowledge base, right? And obviously we have a little bit more robust wiki. I didn't want to put all of our SOPs inside of here, but this will give you a really good base to work off of. Uh, and then don't forget you got GBT prompts because they are really helpful um, from the last episode to structure your SOPs and uh, take the Loom video transcript and actually be able to uh, pick it apart and put it into a structured SOP for you. So if you haven't watched that video yet, make sure you go back and watch that one. It's going to be really important for you guys to start storing the SOPs, but that's how you structure the SOP. Hopefully that makes sense for you guys. If you guys have questions, on that, drop a comment down below uh, and I will get back to you guys and make sure that we answer all those all those comments. Uh, make sure you leave a like on the video, uh, hit subscribe and the notification bell. That way you guys can be notified when the next masterclass comes out. I think we have a couple more uh, that will be coming out and I believe we're going to do a bonus lesson as well because there's a few things that I want to go through on the SOP side as far as efficiencies go. Teach you guys a little bit about swim lanes and, and how to optimize some of the SOPs as well uh, for, for your guys' business. So hopefully that's helpful. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.